Gerard Scarpacey here, craft hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain community. Today I'm super excited to be working with my friend Christine Zielinski. We've got a lot of history together, hey. which we'll talk a little bit about. Everybody. We were actually assistants together over 25 years ago at Sassoon here in New York. Uh, Christine is a salon owner, Salon Concrete, and she's one of the first independent educators that I know. Back in the 90s, she was already out there on her own doing education and really kind of blazing a path for independent education, which I think is incredible. These days she works with Davinez, uh, she uses Davinez in, in her salon and does shows and at different events with Davinez. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that, but most importantly we're going to be talking about this incredible haircut. So let's get you turned around this way so we can see this side, Christine. Make sure Kelly gets a good shot go right in there. Okay. So you've got a lot of different panels and dry cutting going on. Tell us what's going to be happening in your cut. Sure. So I, this is my model, Sarah. Hi. And, Hello. Um, so thank you, Sarah, for joining us today. Um, so what I did was I uh, pre-cut the underneath um, from the nape to the occipital bone with some square graduation, as you can see, through um, the left side. And I'm finishing off um, the right side now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue through and do some disconnected flatter layers through the top and carve out a nice rounded fringe. So as you could see underneath, um, working now on the right side, um, you could see the, the, the length here behind the ear. So I'm gonna maintain the weight and the length all the way through on the shape. So I'm gonna use that area as a guide and I'm gonna cut from that length behind the ear So again, guys, if you're watching at home, we're joining you. We're just starting out live here in New York. I'm with Christine Zielinski. She's going to be sharing some really beautiful precision haircutting on dry hair. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, working panel by panel in a really precise way, Christine. So why did you choose to work dry? Was it just for the efficiency of it, or does it help you see what you're doing? Well, partly, yes, for the efficiency. But then also I do a lot of dry cutting um, in the salon as well. So I would say, um, you know, I, I go back and forth. It's, there's not a texture, a certain texture that I, I do it on. Um, but because the bottom part of Sarah's hair was already short, then I decided to go through. The top is gonna be a lot more free and loose. So that's really my choice of creating, um, of working more dry because of the texture that I wanna see and the looseness and the shape. I want to give a few shout outs to some people tuning in. We've got our buddy Joe Profita, Rick Bennett. How you, how's it going, Rick? We have Joanne Dark. Nice to have you here. Nicola De Filippo. Alex Coop. Thanks for the love. We, we love creating content for our fellow hairdressers, and we're going to keep doing that. Heather Reed is here. Salon Concrete is watching. All right. If you're just joining us, we're here with Christine Zielinski. She's a salon owner here on the East Coast of New Jersey. She's got two salons. Um, in the Red Bank area, and uh, she is one of my favorite educators. We were actually assistants together at Sassoon. Mm, Do you remember those great. days? Yes. Over yes. 25 years ago, we used to I shampoo was, hair next to I was thinking each other. a lot about that on the way here, Gerard. Yeah, yeah. And then we went on together and we worked as educators in the academy in Los Angeles. And then Christine, she was one of the first ones I knew who was really brave. Around 1998, 99, she went out on her own and said, you know what? I want to do my education, my own brand, and she did, and you know, I think it was incredible, because I remember back in those days being so scared, like, how can you not, like, how can you just do it on your own, and you went around salon to salon, you're one of the first people I know that really did that, and yeah. you just said, I've got something to offer you, here's my package, I can come in, you know, a couple times a month, and you built a business and turned it into a salon, Salon Concrete. Well, one of the things that I really enjoyed when I, when I started um, and I left Sassoon and I started working with salon owners was the ability to help them um, multiply their stylists. So um, to really build, help them build um, an artistic team and a, um, a, a leader, like stylists that were leaders that can continue the education in each salon. So, so helping people set up training programs in yes. their own salon so they could mm -hmm. replace themselves and, right. and keep growing, which was And was have a that thing. consistency. Hey, did you know it's, it's Hairstylist Appreciation Day? Kavita Kamini reminded us today's Hairstylist Appreciation Day. So congratulations to all of us hairdressers uh, for being appreciated. 
All right, so back to the technique. So, we had a question coming in about the angle that you're working on. Can you tell us a little bit about why you're elevating and cutting the way that you are? Yeah, so underneath I had, um, I had put the graduation in and I, w I would like the shape to be very loose and more textured. So I'm working with very flat layers internally to create a maximum amount of movement over that graduation. So as you can see, I'm taking vertical sections and I'm right now at the round of the head, so I want to maintain weight and length in this area. Area, So you could see this area behind the ear. I want to maintain that line. So I'm going to over-direct everything back so that I keep the weight right behind the ear. Giving a shout out to our buddy Steve Statland. He says hi. Hi, I always want to hear one of the Jersey boys. We've got Iceling O'Connor watching from Ireland. Heather Ramsey watching from Scotland. Let us know where you guys are watching Sorry. from. We always want to know. We're here in New York. Christine's from New Jersey. And we're, uh, we're sharing this beautiful kind of panel. Would you call it like panel work? Every panel yes. is going to be slightly disconnected on Sarah. Say hi, Sarah. Hi. All right, Sorry. so. I put a little bit of um, oi in the hair, so. So that's this oil here? Yes. So oil, is that something you do a lot of dry cutting with? Yeah, I put, it, I put it to make it a little bit smoother and have a lot of shine. Um, we also pre-colored uh, Sarah's hair mm -hmm. with um, a Davinus View, which now, you could see. As soon as you guys came into the studio today and got in front of the lights, I was like, wow, both of your hair is like so shiny. <laughs> and Christine said it's both View. View is the new demi-permanent that's kind of like rocking everyone's world from Davinez. You can see the beautiful shine. Kelly, can we get a shot of Christine's hair? See how beautiful the shine is on hers. Yes. Because we really noticed that. And what was, what was the formula for yours? Do you so remember? mine was um, five, six, five, and four, oh. So they did um, the base, four, oh, and then the ends, uh, five, six, five, with a little bit of um, gloss over top. So again, you know, if you're just joining us, that's the new Davines View, which is a Debbie permanent. We're focused on cutting today, but we got to show some love for View because it's really incredible new product from our friends at Davines. So um, I'm going to just put a tiny bit of day day on the hair because uh, the hair is really slick. So um, I know when I'm teaching, a lot of times people will ask me, you know, how do you hold the hair, uh, you know, when the hair is really silky? So I just... If you, if you saw that, I just put a, a little bit of day day. So you sprayed this on, on your shape. comb, I noticed. Yes, yeah. I sprayed it on my comb, and then it will allow me to lift the hair a little bit easier and have more control over the hair as I'm cutting. So it's just like a light, like hydro mist type thing, just right. moisture mist. You put it on your comb, give you a little more grip. So I noticed that you're over directing. You're still keeping the elevation high, but over directing back. Yes. What, what's the purpose of that? So right now I want to maintain the weight in, in, the, um, in the outline. And so um, I created a corner behind the ear so that I can keep and maintain this outline shape so I don't end up with a hole in this area. So what, uh, what is your tension like? It feel, like when I watch, I see it so perfectly combed out over your hands. Is there a lot of tension in your hands, or is it just from the comb? So it's mostly from the comb. I'm mm -hmm. not putting a lot of tension. I'm allowing the comb to guide the hair. So as, as I lift the hair, so I'm taking a section, lifting it, and allowing the comb to put the tension on the hair. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure with my fingers. So how important is the comb? I know, you know, uh, being educators, we work with a lot of people, and I'm always talking about how important the tools are. So if you're saying the tension's coming from the comb, then choosing the right comb is a big deal, Yes, huh? yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> a very big deal. And that, that looks like a sesay bond. Is that a sesay bond? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's your favorite, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because I, it has a really nice consistent tension throughout mm -hmm. the whole, um, throughout the comb, so... And I'm mostly, I'll, I'll switch back and forth between the tension on, on the right side and the left side. So whether I want to create a more, more tension, I use the tighter end. And for a, a slightly looser tension, I use the wider end. Now you can see I connected to the side panels. This was already a, you know, a, a slight bit shorter in the front. So her haircut had a more a rounder shape through the outline. So 
I'm, what I want to talk to you a little bit about is sometimes we have the tendency to go in and jump around and go from where we're cutting, our cutting area, then jump to the outline and then go back to the cutting area. So right now I'm just refining the shape that I did, but I'm not going through the outline shape at this moment. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me the opportunity later to make a decision on what we're gonna do with that area. So for those who are asking, the comb is a cesse bond. It's, uh, I'll, I'll write it in the feed here. And those combs are available at hairbrain.pro. Coincidentally, because we just sell good stuff. <laughs> I'm just writing it down here so you guys can see it. We're gonna get you to turn around so we can get a good shot. Lots of love coming in. Someone said, who's that beautiful model? Oh, that's Sarah. So now, <laughs> that's me. Sarah. So now you can see, I just want you to see the difference from when we started with this one length shape and the amount of movement and looseness that's happening in the shape. So because of the graduation that was underneath, you can see how nicely it's hugging on the head shape. So we're gonna continue on the other side. And usually I do that, I go one whole side and then the other. I know sometimes people like to switch sides and that's okay as well. But I'm, I like working one whole side and, and then the other side. It's not right or wrong, it's just no. how you feel at the moment. Right. And I don't always do that. Like sometimes I'll, I'll switch off. Can you talk a little bit, Heather Reed maybe missed the beginning of the undercut. Can you just show what you've got underneath? You can see it really clearly as sure. you comb that out to layer. So you can see I have a little hidden panel under here that was graduated, square graduation through the, through the underneath. And then right at the top of the occipital bone is when, and the top of the ear is when I transitioned into the next phase of, of layering. So when you're doing these kind of panel disconnections, how important is it to pay attention to the head shape? Yeah, very important. The head shape is everything. Um, so it, especially when sectioning, because when you're sectioning, you're always thinking about the head shape. We were, I was just talking about this to a class a couple days ago that I was teaching in Massachusetts. You know, especially if you're compensating for an area that may be flatter um, in the occipital bone, you, you want to make sure that you're checking the head shape before you start as well. So the way that you're putting like this square layer over the graduation, it really makes a beautiful profile because it kind of like fills out and adds curvature to it, doesn't it? Yes. And, you know, when you go in a lot of times with just straight graduation, so if I were going to graduate her and just take Sarah's hair all the way through square, what would happen is the shape would be shorter and it would be hugging her head a lot closer. It gets stiffer too, yes. more static. So you have a lot more movement and yeah. looseness in there. In an interesting way, I found this to be the really beautiful modern way of doing the graduated profile. Yeah. The panel of graduation, and then the panel of, for lack of a better word, we call them square layers, yes. flat layers. But then you just have to choose exactly that length that it falls perfectly over the graduation. Anyone who's familiar, I, I'd say in our history, Christine, when we were being trained, it was the white winter yeah. Remember, that was a oh, technique yes. where we first saw, uh, at least I, I know I first saw it there, graduation with square layers over it, and we let, wow, look at that profile, that's incredible. Yeah, and I think, too, um, I, I love the looseness, and what ha I, was, I was thinking about something when you were just talking. I think sometimes with dry cutting, people are afraid to cut it precise. Mm -hmm. They want to go in and they want to do a lot yeah. of freehand. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. um, as you could see, I am cutting the hair. I'm still, like Gerard mentioned earlier, I'm still working very precise with the shape. Yeah, so again, dry cutting to you isn't just about freehand and texture. No. You can have the hair dried and flat iron, cut it really precise and see. So did you flat iron her hair before? Yes. Or just, yeah. And then you can really see the lines. And you know, interestingly enough, if you, and I know we have, I saw Pas, uh, Pascalan was watching, some of the old school Sassoon stuff, like that Vidal would do, the hair would be dry. Like, yes. And it, what he used to say is it's such a good haircut, it would even look good wet. Yeah. It was like an interesting flip. It wasn't, you know, uh, he, they would just pick up the hair and start cutting it and then say you could just wet it and it would look great. 
So again, now if you want to recap for everyone that's just watching us exactly what's happening. So I started um, in the back of Sarah's hair and as um, soon as I take this last section I'll run through and recap the underneath. So we started at the nape, we did square graduation through the underneath right to the top of the occipital bone to the, to the top of the ear. Then I transitioned and took a, a section like a horseshoe shaped section from right below the crown to the temple and I'm working very flat layers internally and you can see it creates a, a head hugging shape but still with loose looseness and versatility so um, Sarah already had shorter um, a shorter line in the front you could see it was more rounded so I'm connecting to that line as of right now and then what I'll do is I'll come through and I'll carve a nice fringe into Got the a front. great question for you, Christine. Sure. Coming in from David Boardman. He wants to know why you were holding the hair on the outside of your fingers as opposed to the inside. Yeah. So um, I, I was doing that more so right now. Um, you can go both directions. I think you can go over your fingers or under your fingers. What you have to be cautious of doing is if you're working under your fingers like this, you have a tendency to pull the hair down and to graduate the hair more. Mm -hmm. And so when you're working over your fingers, so I always tell um, people to pay attention to the result that you're getting. So if your, your shape is too heavy, so I'll show you an example. If I was over my fingers, I would have a tendency to pick the hair up. I would have a tendency to lift the hair and elevate the hair, which can cause the top part of the shape to be flatter because shorter hair pushes longer hair and so it could cause the shape to be more round and flat. So the general thing with hand positioning and you, you, you can only generalize because there's no perfect answer for everything right. but when you work inside the hand you go to lower elevations. When you work over the hand it's more comfortable for higher elevations yes. and then you kind of take it from there. That's a general rule of thumb. <laughs> and I, I also think um, and I agree with you uh, Jara that it is a very general rule of thumb and I and I like to sort of give people an easy way to think about things so if I were to section the hair underneath the occipital bone I wouldn't take my sections over my my finger unless you're like really reaching over yeah. your head trying to flatten it yeah. out right most of the time I would be working palm to palm right. do you ever hear like if you're cutting below the heart level you work inside the hands or inside the comb. If you want to work above the heart level, you can work overhand. No, I've yeah, never that's heard another that, one. Because really. that's the you know, it's just comfort of how your body works. All right. So, so again, if you're just joining I'm gonna, us, I'm going to work now on the side panel. Sorry, George. That's okay. I'm going to turn you around a little bit. If you're just joining us, we're here in New York City at our home away from home, Blonde Studio, uh, doing another in our series with Davinez. Davinez works with us twice a month to bring you guys outstanding education. We focused a lot on color the past couple months with the launch of some of the new products like View. Our model, Sarah, has the beautiful View on her hair, so you can see how shiny that is. Just beautiful demi-permanent color to make it shiny. Um, and Christine, who is a salon owner in the Davinez Network, owns two salons here in New Jersey. We'll talk about that in just a minute. I've been She's, with Davinez for almost 16 years. Yeah, yeah, we were back in the days, right? Yeah, okay, now this cross-checking. There were some questions about this. Can you really explain that? Yes. So we want to maintain this, the outline. So we said everything from underneath the occipital bone all the way through to the temple, we want to maintain this strong shape. So when I cross check, so if I, if I sectioned everything vertical and I over directed back to maintain the weight behind the ear, and then I started to come gradually around to meet this section, but I don't wanna to take too much weight out of here. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come through horizontally and I'm gonna allow everything that's underneath the temple area to drop maintain that weight and I'm going to cross check through so again the, the hair is very silky so it's going to take a lot of dexterity to hold the right amount of tension in your fingers so I'm coming through and just really a dusting to connect the back length right through to to the front 
panel. Well, lots of love coming in for how beautifully you're, you're working with the hair and how beautiful the shape is coming along here. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, we'd love to hear them. Yeah, here's one coming in from Nikki Feldseth. Um, how would this shape work on naturally curly hair? So the shape, actually beautiful. I've done it on naturally curly hair. Yeah, it's perfect and kind of it's, concept. And it's great for naturally curly, and I'll tell you why. Because what happens is the disconnection with the curl, um, it doesn't allow the, the, the hair texture to all sit at one point. Right. So it, it makes it a lot more free. It's got that yes. movement. A lot and then like free. that undercut in the nape helps take out the triangle. So variations of these panels work beautiful in curly hair as well. It's so nice to see so much diversity. You know, we see lots of, obviously through the classes that we do on hair brain, we've seen razor cutting, dry cutting with lots of texture, technical wet cutting, technical dry cutting. It's all great, guys. If you want to be the best, learn how to do it all as best as you can. Keep trying new things. Keep experimenting. There is no right and wrong. The only thing that's wrong is if it comes out and your client doesn't like it. That's the only ever, ever thing that's wrong. So it's about knowing as many techniques as possible and getting to communicate that with your client and building a really happy, successful business like Christine has. Now, if you guys want to stick around later, after we're done here, we're going to do a quick little Instagram Live. I'm going to roll. Christine's also a super successful, super smart business owner. And I want to focus on the haircut here, but when we're, going to do, when we're done, we're going to do a little 20 minute interview. Christine, you got time uh, for that? Okay, sure. And we're going to talk business because that's something that we want to do. So come over to us for so, the Instagram. Let Kelly get in here and get a good, good, good angle. So she's dodging your elbows. You see, you see where I ended up um, to our last panel underneath. So I, I ended up with vertical sections. I'm going to connect that right through the crown. The one thing I would be um, checking is what is your crown uh, hair doing? Do you have calyx? I would always be paying attention to that. And watching, if you do have a very strong hair growth pattern there, watch how much tension you're putting on the hair because you don't want the hair to jump too much in that area. So I'm going to take it vertical, straight up. Lots of looseness. Shapes coming out really pretty. So I'm going to turn you around this way just so Kelly can get a really good shot of what you're doing. There we go. We really want to see that elevation and that combing. So the section's just vertical. So vertical section. And now you're following through the underneath. So through the last section that last we took, panel. yes. But still disconnected from the graduation. It's disconnected from the graduation. And I feel like I feel like the elevations on the lower side in general, so is that going to it, it's going to help you build more contour into the profile? Yes. Rather than bringing it right up. I think, you know, lots of times we think, "Oh, I got a round, I got a round," especially in the crown. But here you're kind of still building some weight. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is when I connect the top, I'm going to come back so that I can continue to build that weight through the front lengths as well. Heather Reed is wondering if you still travel to teach. Yes, I do. Actually, I just got back. I was in Massachusetts this weekend teaching. So, so you're busy with the new salon and the established salon yes, there in Red yes. Bank, still teaching. Yeah, we have a really great team, and it's part of what I, I love to do, like I was saying earlier, is build teams. And so we have a phenomenal team um, back home in Red Bank and now um, in Home Dell at our Bell Works location. So it allows me the opportunity to get out, and I think that it's very inspiring for the team as well. It, it gives them more opportunity as well. I have one of my team members here with me, um, so it's great that um, she gets to come out and, and be at events. And that's part of your whole philosophy is that you kind of train your staff to kind of replace you in different things. Yeah. So you've, you've created a whole bunch of great stylists who can now work behind the chair, which allows you then to work more on the business. Then you focus on education, and now they're all doing education. I mean, it's, um, I don't know if you got a chance to hear it, but we did a um, Hair Brain Conversations podcast with Van Council, oh, who we, I think is I, one of the most brilliant salons. I, I know say. he's the best salon owner in the world. I, if you guys haven't heard that, just, just Google Hair Brain Conversations. Uh, wherever podcasts are, you can find Hair Brain Conversations. And the last one was with Van, who, again, uh, they, you can, I was just thinking about, you know, because Christine's opened a new salon that's in a little bit more of like a mall type space. So it's a lot more walk in traffic. And, you know, we'll talk about that later on the Instagram Live. But it's a whole different set of challenges for a business owner, isn't it? 
Well, I reached out to Van, actually, a few years ago, and I had never met him before, but I remember actually you, Gerard, telling me all about Van. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm like a I, Van group. <laughs> I, I called no him, yeah. and I asked him... Um, he was so generous with his time that he stayed on the phone with me for a good 45 minutes and talked to me about... Um, the salon, how he is so successful, and then I asked him if it was possible that I can come down to his location and spend the day. And he said, sure, I, I would love to have you. And so I went down and I spent the entire day So with guys, him. how incredible is our industry? It's all about relationships. You know, I mentioned to her, Van, she gets in touch with him, and that, that's really what it's all about. All of us helping to support each other, share what we know. The more that we share together, the more that we grow. And that's what these harebrained lives are all about. So let's get into the technique again. I've got a question here from Cindy Brown. Um, so she's wondering if you're just pulling it straight out or you're over-directing. So at the round of the head, I am over-directing. So again, we were talking about the head shape earlier. Mm -hmm. And so where I started to over-direct was, if you hold your comb here, you could see that the head shape starts to turn. That's my cue for, for my over-direction. So whether the hair is shorter or longer, you can put the comb here and you can get a feel for where the head rounds and know that's where you should start to pull the hair back. To make it square. Like, again, if you pulled everything right to the middle, you might get more, like, concave. It might get too heavy on yes. the sides. Especially for what you're trying to create. It would be, like, dog ear. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so you could see that nice, loose texture in there. And because of the disconnection underneath, you know, you're getting this movement, but it's the hair isn't too structured at the head shape. So you're getting the graduation, but with this nice, loose texture over top. That's looking beautiful. Okay, so what's next? Okay, so what's next is we're going to come through the front area. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of day-day. I'm going to turn it around a little bit, see if we can get a good angle. I'm going to use a little day-day on my comb because my hands are... So again, so working with dry hair, and Christine is recommending that if that hair feels really slick, you can use a little day-day hair mist on your comb just to give yourself a little bit more grip. Okay, and then I'm going to connect the front lengths and I'm going to take horizontal sections um, and I'm doing this because it, it's going to give me a little bit more control to over direct the hair from the front back and so what's important that I want to pay attention to is where was my elevation vertically when I was in the back so I'm taking this hair over directing it back and I'm going to connect it to my line that I already established in the previous section. You know, as I watch you cut, you know, for me, it's, it's so incredible. Because as I mentioned, if you've been watching, Christine and I were apprentices together. We started our training together over 25 years ago. And I can see so much of our mentors, Penny, Vernon, Nick Berardi, all these great educators, our mentors. I can see them when I watch Tracy, when I watch you, when I see myself. I see so much of that. That's why it's so important to share the craft. And I'm just watching you, you got that little Penny, remember Penny? <laughs> she was such a great, Penny Wang, who's still a great hair. Do you want to hear a funny yeah. story? I, I love a, a funny client. story. I had a client come into my salon in Red Bank, and they go to one of my team members, Holly, and Holly is moving uh, to Austin. And so I went up to the desk and I said to her, I know Holly's leaving, I would love to, to team you up with another stylist. And she said, well, I came, to, I came here because of Vidal Sassoon, because you worked at Vidal Sassoon, and I, I go to Penny. I said, wow, look at that. So when you were saying before about our industry is amazing, you know, it's so great to recommend, um, you know, other, other salons that you know have the same passion for the craft. Now, being part of the Davines Network... And, you know, going out there and sharing education through that network, have you built lots of new relationships? I mean, again, it's been over 16 years you've worked with Davines. Yeah. But tell me about some of the new relationships, some of the mentors that you have now within the brand. Well, I mean, for a while, um, before, I started really getting into a lot more personal development the last five years. But prior to that, I was working a lot um, with Angelo. I was getting the opportunity to... Go to Italy. So when you say Angela, you're talking about Angela Seminara, Seminara, the global creative director for Davines. Yes. And so I really, um, you know, I, w I was able to establish really beautiful relationships with Angelo and the team and um, really kind of push my boundaries a little bit. 
So you can see what's happening in the shape. So a lot of looseness happening. Now I didn't go into the outline at all just yet. I'm gonna start to work now on, on connecting the fringe, but before I do that, I'm gonna work through the, the top and take vertical sections. And you'll see a little bit of a corner there. So that's from the over direction, like her right. existing bang, and then the over direction, and you're taking, why do you decide to take that corner off? So I don't want to leave it too heavy because I'm going to create this nice round shape through the front, but I do want to keep the weight through the sides. So it's going so, to help with the framing of the face? Yes. And that corner would maybe just be a bit random and clunky? Yeah, it really wouldn't make sense as I work through the fringe. Do you think that a, a great haircut always makes sense? Sometimes, yeah. they, I'm just asking, just since we're talking. <laughs> That's a good Do question. they sometimes not make sense? Yeah, sometimes yeah. they don't. Yeah. I think it's uh, all in the eye of the beholder, you know? There you go. Yeah, it's all perception. And I think that really depends on, on the artist. And of course, like you said earlier, the client. What's yeah. gonna make them happy? And what's gonna make them, you know, feel beautiful? So again, if you're just joining us, we've been watching Christine Zielinski, salon owner from Salon Concrete, and a Davinez Network salon owner for over 16 years, and someone that I know since we were babies in the craft. We were assistants together. We used to shampoo heads together at <laughs> Sassoon. Um, sharing just beautiful, beautiful technique here. Graduation in the nape, panels of layering on the top. Now, I know she's getting around to the face, so yeah. this is something you all want to pay attention to, getting in there and cutting a big kind of open fringe or bang shape, yeah? Yes. All right, so, so now, let's figure out our angle, make sure Kelly's got it. Where are you going to work from? We want to get really good shots of this. So now I'm going to work, um, I like to work from the shortest point. So when you take a look at the fringe right now um, on Sarah, this is really the, the shortest and the strongest point. So I'm gonna work, um, I'm gonna keep that in mind right there. And I'm just gonna take diagonal sections. So it's almost like a face framing section? Yes. So why diagonal? that way rather than just horizontally? Okay. I'll tell you why, because I'm gonna create a more rounded shape all the way through the front. And so, if you take a look at the guy that I'm gonna work with, so remember I said the, the shortest shape in here, you see that gets quite short in that area right at the temple. So I'm gonna use that as a guide and I'm gonna work from the center down to this length, right? Rounding through. Rounding through. All right, let's make sure we have a good angle here. Everyone's going to want to see this. So you're going to start in the center. So maybe Kelly needs to come around here a little. Here we go. Money time. Now, why holding it with the comb like that? Okay, so I'm holding it with the comb to keep the tension consistent and the, and the hair in, all in the right place. So as I, as I cut the hair, it's going into its natural fall. So I'm just going to... Now, Christine, there's a question coming in from Anita. Do you uh, recommend round bangs on round face shapes? What, what's your thought mm -hmm. there about face shapes? I, I know it's, it's a big question. Cut. Yeah, it is a big question. Um, so, and just generally talking about suitability here, or how you choose a round line. So I, it really depends on the person. I always look. I look. I do look at face shape, but I also look at personality of of who I'm working on and what they're they're able to wear um, and so so not always is it face you know so do, am I always concerned with face shape? so there's more to it than just face yes shape, there? it's there's personality there's yes I think you know the thing I've always said is magazines need to have something to print and they always just go back to this basic like face shape thing but every single person's an individual and every hairdresser's an individual and if the two of them can combine they can come up with something unique and beautiful for each person. There is no right and wrong about face shape. So, or um, age, for or that age, matter. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Milanka Coppola is watching. So wants to know where all the, all the concrete ladies are. So you can, you can really see, if you take a look um, in, in here, you wanna just dust her off? So you see how that opened up her face? Just by taking that, um, that fringe a little bit deeper and rounder. And this, 
this really, this hair here wasn't necessary. I could get a much stronger shape without it. Eliminate the superfluous. Yes. <laughs> Edit it down to its core. Okay, it looks like you're kind of pointing so, a little bit more now. So yeah. why changing the scissor? So I'm pointing because I want to create this sort of soft edge on the very top. You know, the that term line. that's been going around a lot lately that I kind of like is a soft blunt. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it, it kind of, you know, either if you're doing it with like a closed razor or like pointing like you're doing. Our good friend Jenny Balding, another incredible salon owner and, and hairdresser, I, she was using the term soft blunt a lot, and I really like that. So so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with my body position directly behind because it's easier to get in here, because I know a lot, of, a lot of you might be thinking like how, you know, how is she working with the shear so close to the skin, but the, the blade that's not moving is the blade that's on the skin and allows me to come down and around. And then I'm gonna come right back up. How important is it to go down and up? So if I were to come straight down, then I would miss this hair that's on, on the underneath. So it's allowing me to continue that curve. Yeah, I'm going to get in there and clean off. Very important to keep your guests comfortable and mm -hmm. clean off that face hair as much as you can. Not interested in having a beard today, are you, Sarah? No, no. not particularly. So again, a lot of love coming in for what you're doing so, here, Christine. Yeah. So yeah. I, hope that, I hope you like it so far. Everyone loves it. Lots of love coming in, yeah, you know. Yeah. The, the combination of strength but softness through elevation is is incredible. I think it's that's a nice balance sometimes is to find that. Um, and there is a fine line between sometimes being uh, very geometric and graphic but yet soft and beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of where you fit in, right? You've got that strong ge geometry but... You know, you're a salon-based hairdresser, so you're always trying to kind of find that softness, that soft blunt. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. So in, in, on this side, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, I'm taking a look at the fringe in the front so I could see my, my guide, right? And remember we spoke about, this side's actually a little bit different, so it doesn't come back as deep and, and not really quite as short, but I'm going to work from still the shortest point to that shortest point there. So if you come on this side, oh, this way, yeah. Make sure Kelly's got a good shot. We don't want to miss this. So okay. and I'm going to hold my shear from a lower point of view. So I have to be careful as I'm working because remember it's slightly rounded here. So I want to hold my shear on a more of a diagonal. So if I come like this, what's going to happen is I'm going to be a lot more horizontal and I'm going to get a stronger square shape. So I'm working my scissors or my shear more diagonal on the shape. And then you can use your comb as well like we were doing earlier. We're all holding our breath. The money shot. It's great. And, you know, the choice of length. Is that really you're just looking at her? Like, I'm looking at it from the side, and it, like, feels like it's right on this, the contour of her skull when I look from the side there. Maybe, Kelly, you can get a shot from the side. It's, like, right on that kind of contour of the skull. Beautiful place to do it. All right, now tightening it up so and you kind of get in can there. I, can I tell you, when we were having the consultation earlier, um, Sarah, do you mind if I of share? Of course. Okay. So I had to ask her first. But, <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that um, Sarah was a little bit self-conscious about was that she felt as though her forehead, um, she's always been a little bit nervous about her forehead showing too much. So many people have talked to her about a shorter fringe. And um, so I had this conversation with her about the fact that sometimes when we leave our fringe too long, it actually accentuates the length. It actually accentuates the length even more. So because what happens is the longer hair shows more length. Mm -hmm. And so it makes the... Um, 
the forehead appear slightly longer. And just to add to that, I mean, as soon as you cut the, the shorter bang in, the eyes just pop so much. Yeah. That it's the, the trade off there, however, you might feel about your forehead, your eyes just look <laughs> so beautiful when you Thank get rid you. of that extra hair. Thank you. So it's all, you know, and again, that's, the, that's what I mean about the, the hairdresser and the, the client or the guest kind of putting it together. No book is going to tell you that Sarah Smith must mm -hmm. have this exact haircut. Yeah, exactly. You know, Christine and Sarah have to figure that out themselves through, mm -hmm. through their relationship. And then Christine has to be able to execute it through technique. And I think there is a trust level of, you know, when I, when I spoke to Sarah about that, I think that it built more trust for her to, mm -hmm. um, to, for her to understand that I was confident when I told her that it would work out really well and it would look great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for you, Christine, where does, that, where does that level come from? It comes from so much experience and practice, doesn't it? Yes. If you're a hairdresser who isn't confident, how can you get more confident? What would you, you suggest? Knowledge. Yeah. I would, I would say, you know, get, go to as many classes as you can and really build that confidence. So as you could see, I'm working on the opposite side. Again, so the, the blade that doesn't move is on the skin, and I'm going to work upward. And it's so important how deep you go in here, right? Yes. You're trying to not go into the hairline too, too much. And I mean, again, and, just what you just did there, she went from like a nine to a 10 plus. <laughs> it's amazing how a little thing like that, now your cheekbones are just like, bam. Thank you. So Lots of love coming in, Christine. The rest is going to be a bit of refining and then I'm going to strengthen up the outline. Show us so, what you're going to do. So again, if you're just joining us, I know a lot of you are, I see a lot of new names popping up. Uh, Rocco Ionello, great to have you here. Cindy Brown, uh, Melissa Fabian says, just what she needed today for inspiration. <laughs> Alessandro Comai, another one of our friends from the Davinez world. Kate Daffin, always great to have you here, and thanks for sharing the love. Kate says it looks beautiful. Um, we're here with Christine Thanks, Zielinski. We're at Blonde in New York City. It's our kind of home away from home studio. Christine's representing Davinez Education here. You know, we do these Facebook Lives at least twice a month for our friends at Davinez. We've been doing a lot of color lately, showing the new view, which you're seeing on both of these ladies. I think Christine is the, the perfect view model here. If you guys can see the beautiful shine on her hair, views the new Now what we're focusing on is brilliant hair cutting with Christine Zielinski. Should put this shape in. If you miss the shape, guys, you can go back at any time. Visit Hairbrain on Facebook, and you can rewind and fast forward and watch the whole shape. But now she's getting in there for maybe one of the most important parts, the refining. So take it away, Christine. So I, you can see I'm, I'm working over the shape. Whether we're on video or not, I would still do that when I'm in the salon. So because it allows me the opportunity to lift the hair a little bit better, away from the head shape. So for me, my perspective is that it keeps the shape lighter. So in, in comparison to doing this sometimes, this can have a little bit of a heavier effect. So what I'm doing is I'm working over the shape and I'm gonna lift away from the head shape and up. And I'm, I'm hearing some of the words of one of our early mentors, Christine Vernon, and he used to just say, yeah. elevate it and make it lighter. Yes. So that was how yes. he would teach. Yeah. He would just and that's say, exactly what I'm it. doing. Overdirect it back and keep it longer. Elevate it and make it lighter. And I'm, I'm going to do that all the way through. So um, we took vertical sections directly back, and I'm going to take horizontal sections working over the hair, like Gerard said, over and lighter. And now why point cutting? And can you tell us a little bit about the, the technique of point cutting? So what I'm doing is um, I'm pointing so that the ends would have a little bit of softness too, depending on the angle of your shear. So I'm going really vertical on the hair. I'm not changing. The important part is that I'm not changing the foundation of the shape that we just put in. I'm just going through on the, on the very ends of the hair and vertical so that I don't take away too much length. So if I, if I wanted to get a, maybe a, a more of a stronger texture, I may go in a bit more diagonal on the hair. You could see I'm going in very vertical, and so the shape is looser. 
Sierra Perkins is wondering about strong growth directions in calyx, especially when working on bangs and outlines. Can you give us any insight on how you work with them? So, so you could see Sarah has a really strong growth pattern. And the one thing I said is I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but this was going to dictate to me whether I, I decide to do that. And so um, it depends on where it is. That's a pretty um, loaded question, I should say. But if it was a growth pattern like this, I would either have to take it off short or I would have to make the decision to keep the length uh, quite strong and the line quite strong like, like I did. So I hope that helped. So now this line is already here from, from earlier, but I'm, I am going to go through and I'm going to point in just to strengthen, strengthen it. So Sarah kind of had a one length bob when you started. You put in a panel of graduation using the line that was there, panels of overlapping layers, beautifully rounded fringe, and now you're coming back to the outline at the end? Right, exactly. Why not go in and do the outline right at the beginning? So you could do the outline at the beginning, but for me, um, because we were doing a rounded shape in the front, I wanted more opportunity. So I wasn't quite sure if we were to do something that was really solid, um, it, it just... I wanted the emphasis to be on the movement and the layers and to have more opportunity in the outline last. So generally, if the focus is on the interior, you do the interior and then you come back and touch up the edges. Yes. If you wanted this to be all about the line, maybe you would have done the line first. Yes. And tried to kind of, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So I'm, and I'm going to point in the, the line, the whole, the whole entire line. Everything's going to be done pointing because it's really more refining than I need to do. And that angle that your scissors at, it, it's actually going to give you that soft blunt effect. It's not really going to be kind of chopping up the ends. No, I'm not going deep in the hair. I'm just staying towards the, so if you want to get a little bit closer, see, I'm just staying towards the edge of the shape. So it's, it's still maintaining the line that's there. It's just creating softness. So what did you say earlier? That soft, soft blunt? blunt. Yeah. And why press it with the comb like that? So, it, well, it allows you to um, see the line a little bit clearer, for one, and it's adding a slight bit of tension on the hair. And do you find and, on dry hair that makes it softer? Yes. Stretching the hair a little bit? Yes. So some shout-outs. Angela Flores Alba, giving a shout-out. Hey, Christine. Oh, hey. Heather Reed still with us. Thanks, Heather. Stephen Brooks, our old friend Stephen Brooks is watching. Great to have you here, Stephen. Anthony DeSalvo, Dana Howard. Guys, let us know where you're watching from. We're getting close to the end, but this is some really important stuff. All this refining right here is the difference between good and great, isn't it? Yes. So now you were saying before, you know, when you're, when you're combing down, if you see that hairline underneath, I don't want to comb that hairline too strongly forward, right? I, I want to keep it in its natural fall underneath. So what I'm doing is with the wide end of the comb, I'm combing in its natural fall first, and then I'm coming through and holding the, the tension on the hair. Do you see the difference? All the little things. The little things that make a difference between good and great, huh? Yeah, it's all attention to detail. And Christina, are you still working behind the chair every day, or what's your schedule like? I'm working behind the chair about uh, three to four days a week. That's um, pretty full time. Right yeah. now, because we opened a new location, and um, I'm mostly in that location getting it started. So, uh, but I was really down to maybe uh, a day, two days before that. And if you guys are interested in, in kind of talking more business... Christine and I, when she's finished with the haircut here, we're going to do an Instagram Live. So just head over to Hairbrained Official. We're going to do a little 20-minute sit-down. We're going to talk about business. Christine's just opened her second salon. She's got a lot of exciting things to share. Plus, I know Christine is very much on the leadership path and coaching people to be great leaders. So when we're done here, if you want to change gears and kind of talk a little bit industry and business and motivation, head over to Hairbrained Official on Instagram and check out our Instagram Live. Looking like a masterpiece. That's what Irina says. I agree. So here's an interesting question. Uh, 
Nandita Narula is wondering if you would use a clipper on the outline. So would I use a clipper? Sure. Yeah, to tighten up the bald yeah. line or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because some people are just so opposed to that. Unfortunately, sometimes people have really strong beliefs. Or not unfortunate, you know. I, I just personally think you should be as open-minded and try everything. You know, I wasn't at one point in, in my career, and I think that um, learning to be more open-minded, because I remember when I first left Sassoon, I was a little rigid in my approach to, you know, how I looked at hair, how I did hair, how I thought about it, and um, I changed over the years. Uh, Owning a salon will change your pretty quick, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm being very rigid and I'm having a hard time paying my bills. Maybe I need to learn how to <laughs> yeah. be a little more flexible. Yeah, and, and I think there's so much beauty in all the tools that we use. Yeah. Like, I was watching one of the videos where I think you had Frank Rizieri, and he was using all of these hot tools, and, you know, I, I just think it's really beautiful. Yeah, there's, there's so much beauty and so many different interpretations of it. And, you know, I know both Christine and I are from the same kind of generation, so we're getting into our third decade or so of doing hair, right? And if you're going to do this for three, four, five decades, you better be open-minded. Yes. Because yeah, everything sure. that you believe is right is going to change. Yeah, and I think sometimes when we're more resistant to that change, it creates more challenges for us, for sure. I can tell you in business, for sure, that has happened. <laughs> so just kind of doing those final, like... So these are the last details. Yeah, what are you looking for here, the final, final? Because, you know, I, I also do believe that overdoing it is worse. You know, sometimes people, especially when you teach a lot, you see it. People put that extra 20 minutes in, and you're like, if you would have stopped 20 minutes yeah. ago, it would have been perfect. Yeah. So how do you know when to stop? So... Well, I use a lot of feeling, I guess you could say it's, um, but I, I think less is more. And so when do you know when to stop? I think when, after you've taken enough classes to know, mm -hmm. and that's really important, is gaining the knowledge that you really need to take your craft to that level. Um, that's what's going to give you the confidence on when, it, when to stop and you know where to take your sections and and all of those fine details so now there's a couple last things that I'm going to do just for refining and then I'm going to put a little bit of hairspray and texture and then that's it I mean she looks great I think she looks fab fabulous in the thousands of comments that have said she looks fabulous as well. Now, guys, if you're enjoying this, enjoyed the technique, you remember you can go to Hairbrain on Facebook at any time. Click the video tab. We've got hundreds of videos. If you missed the beginning of this, you can watch it step by step from the beginning. You can fast forward. You can rewind. You can even keep leaving comments. Tag Christine. Tag Salon Concrete. And then they'll know that you have a question or a comment, which would be fantastic. Now, we're going to change gears in just a minute, and we're going to do a little, a little Instagram Live. So if you want to continue, I've got lots of questions for Christine about business, about how she's become so successful as a salon owner. And I really truly believe she was one of the very first independent educators. It's a huge movement now. Christine was a pioneer in that. She was out there on her own in the 90s doing classes all over the country, all over the world. So we have a lot to learn from her. If you want to kind of join us for that dialogue, head to Instagram, hairbrained underscore official, and click the live uh, on our stories, and you can see us just talk for like 20 minutes or so. I'm going to let you wrap up this beautiful haircut. You want to take this off? Sure. I'm going to put a little hair today. Let me know when I can, <laughs> when I can see you. Sarah, she's been a champ. She hasn't been able to see this whole time. Me neither. So I'm putting a little medium hole, Davinus medium hole. Well, you wore your glasses, Christine, so... <laughs> Awesome, Christine. It looks fantastic. So a little bit. Just why did you choose here? Is it like a light hairspray? So it's a medium a little hole, spray? little finishing spray. And that's what I use to flat iron the hair as well prior to um, cutting. So I hope you enjoyed. Oh, I know they did. You can see the comments. Everyone was so supportive, and it was wonderful. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you want to, head over to our Instagram page. And you can follow the live. Me and Christine are going to keep talking. Peace out. Bye, everybody. Thanks.